great. Well, it's great to celebrate, and it's great to rejoice in having God's Word together. And so we're going to turn and read some of this precious Word now. So please, um, if you haven't got a Bible, we're going to refer to this lots through our service today. So if you haven't got one and need one, raise your hand, and one of our stewards will bring you a Bible. Uh, But turn with me to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, that's on page 1089 in our church Bibles. Yeah, John chapter 20. Verses 1 to 10. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Just take a seat. Um, And Tessa and Lizzie are going to come and read the next part of God's Word. Uh, Do please open your Bibles back to page 1089. 1089. And starting at verse 11 of chapter 20. Thank you both. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, She bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where, he, you, where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus turned to her, Mary, and said, no, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father, and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Morning, everyone. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! What a great day! What a day to celebrate! It's lovely to see you, lovely to have you. We do have John chapter 20 open in front of you. We're going to look at that together. Now, kids, um, you're going to have to remind me, you're going to have to help me out here, okay? So what happened uh, to Jesus on the first Good Friday? What happened to him? What happened to him? Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. 
Christopher. He was crucified. That's right. So Jesus died and he was crucified on the cross. People must have been really, really sad. And when they visited his grave on Easter Sunday, what did they see there? Kids, what? Yeah. The tomb was empty because Jesus was alive again. You're absolutely right. But let's just think about that. I thought you said, I thought you said that he died on Good Friday, and now you're saying he's alive on Easter Sunday. How, 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 how can he be dead and then alive on the Sunday? I mean, that is extraordinary. That is extraordinary. Dead things don't come back to life, or certainly not resurrected life. Anyway, I mean, is that true? Is that real? It is true. We're going to look at the Bible. We are going to examine the evidence, as Ollie (laughs) showed us a little bit earlier with the eggs, all right? So we're we're going to examine the evidence. So early on that first Easter Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' followers, headed to the tomb. Now, she knew exactly where it was because she saw where Jesus had been laid. You can see that in Mark's gospel. She didn't get the wrong tomb. She knew where Jesus was laid. She went to the right tomb. There's the first piece of evidence. Proof number one, she went to the right tomb. And when she got there, she was shocked. She was confused because the big stone across the entrance had been rolled away. So she ran back to Simon, Peter, and John, the one that Jesus loved, as we read in John's Gospel. And verse 2, she said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. It never occurred to her that Jesus had risen and was alive again, never entered her mind. Now, we don't get much about Peter in the gospel accounts uh, of the empty tomb. John gives us the most detail here, and there's not a lot of it. So this morning, we are going to focus on the resurrection. We'll see more of Peter in the coming weeks. For now, though, Peter and John, shocked at Mary's words, at what they heard, they started out for the tomb. Verse 4, they had a running race. John got there first, he looked in, he peeped in, and then Peter arrived, probably blowing a little bit, all right, and he just goes straight in, that's Peter, just goes straight in. Now you can imagine their confused and scrambled minds. Verses 6 and 7, what did, uh, what did he see? He saw the strips of linen used to wrap Jesus' body and the cloth that had been wrapped around his head, folded up. Now, back in chapter 19, verses 39 to 40, we are told that Joseph and Nicodemus put 75 pounds of spices of myrrh and aloes in the linen as they wrapped Jesus' body up. The linen and the spices were expensive, But they were the only things that were worth anything. A dead body wasn't worth anything. So Jesus' body couldn't have been stolen because robbers wouldn't have left the valuable bit behind and taken away a worthless, smelly body. They'd have taken the linen too if the body had been stolen. So here is another proof, another proof that John that Jesus had risen, that the body had not been stolen. So it was the right tomb, the body hadn't been stolen. Now, how else might we prove somebody is alive? Rebecca, Rebecca, come and join me up front, all right? There we go, come and stand up there. Now, Rebecca, you're alive, aren't you? Yes, marvellous, right, okay. Right, now, perhaps the first way we know that Rebecca is alive is by seeing 
she's alive, okay? So everyone just shut your eyes for a moment. Now open them. And you can see her. You can see that Rebecca is alive. Who was the first person to see Jesus alive? Well, it was, yeah, it was Mary. You're absolutely right. It was. It was Mary Magdalene. She didn't recognize Jesus at first, partly because I think that she wasn't expecting Jesus uh, to, have, to have risen from the dead, and partly, I think, because the resurrection body is the same, but it is different. That's what Paul suggests in 1 Corinthians 15. It's why Jesus could pass through a locked door to meet his disciples. It's the same body, but it was different. But Mary saw Jesus alive again. And once she'd been persuaded, verse 18, she went and told the disciples, I've seen the Lord. I've seen the Lord, the risen Lord Jesus. And who else saw him? Well, Peter and the disciples saw him. That's right, Peter. That first Easter Sunday evening, they saw him in that locked room. Can you show everyone your hands? That's it, hold your hands up. So there we go. So you can, there's Rebecca showing you her hands. These are her hands. She is alive. Okay, you can put them down again now. <laughs> right, grab a seat just for a moment. Okay. Now, likewise, look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. Jesus is with the disciples. We read, after Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. The disciples hadn't expected Jesus to rise from the dead. And so Jesus showed them his hands and his side where the wounds would have been. He hadn't been reincarnated. He had been resurrected. This really was his body. This really was him. And the disciples were overjoyed. They saw Jesus, the risen Jesus, proof that he was alive. Okay. How else can we prove Rebecca's alive? Come and stand up for me again one more time. Well, we grab that. We'd be able to hear her, wouldn't we? If Rebecca's alive, we'd be able to hear her. So, Rebecca, can you wish everyone a happy Easter? Happy Easter. There we go. Can you say, peace be with you? Peace be with you. Can you say, Spurs are the best team in the world? No, don't. You're going to have to say that. All right. Okay. <laughs> you sit down. <laughs> Okay, but you heard Rebecca speak. She's alive. Now, likewise, Mary heard Jesus speak. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. We don't know how he said it, but he said, Mary. And she turned toward him and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. As I said, it didn't occur initially for Mary, uh, for Mary that Jesus had risen from the dead. She needed convincing. She needed to be persuaded. And hearing Jesus speak, that did it. She recognized his voice, the way he said, Mary. She knew it was him. He really had risen. What a beautiful moment that must have been. And of course, Peter and the disciples also heard Jesus speak. Peace be with you. I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. They heard Jesus, the risen Jesus, speak proof he was alive. Rebecca, stand up for me. Let's give Rebecca a quick round of applause. There we go. There we go. There you go. You can go and sit down. I just gave uh, Rebecca a few little Easter eggs just as a thank you. Uh, you can eat those a little bit later. Just like Jesus ate fish in front of his disciples to prove that he was no ghost. That's not in John's account. That's in Luke's account. And you can read that later uh, yourselves. So we've examined the evidence. We've got the right tomb. We've got the linen and the headcloth. We've got Mary and the disciples seeing the risen Jesus. 
We've got them hearing the risen Jesus. Jesus even ate fish in that other gospel account. Overwhelming proof. For John, who was there and has written down for us what happened so that we can believe as he did, the resurrection is fact. It is historical fact that gives us great confidence that this is true, to live for the Lord Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus, because this is true. This is no fairy tale. This is historical fact. Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen. A happy So we've examined the proof that Jesus is alive. But now let's think about the benefits. I wonder who's learned to ride a bike. You learned to ride a bike? Yes. I remember when I learned to ride a bike, the moment the stabilizers come off, and you're all wobbly, desperately trying to balance, and it's a bit scary. But just like in that picture, I remember my dad was with me, his hand on the saddle, until he let go, obviously. <laughs> He's not going to let. But his hand on the saddle, there with me. Keep pedaling. Keep pedaling. I've got you. I've got you. And knowing dad was there and hearing him say, I've got you, it gave me peace. It gave me peace. And I learnt to ride my bike. Today we celebrate that Jesus is alive. But that's not all that we celebrate. You see, because Jesus is alive, he can give us peace. He can give us peace. It's like he says to us, I'm alive. I've got you. I've got you. Did you notice what Jesus' first words were when he met his disciples there in verse 19? His first words, peace be with you. He says it again in verse 21, peace be with you stressing that he had come to bring peace, (laughs) a wonderful peace with God that comes only through the risen Lord Jesus. Who are these guys? Who's that? (laughs) Who's that? Shout, Shout it out. Woody and Buzz, absolutely cracking characters. Can never get enough of uh, Toy Story. Now, in Toy Story 3, if you remember, Buzz gets reprogrammed. And he turns on Woody and the others, and then he imprisons them. And suddenly, Buzz and Woody are enemies. But then Buzz gets rescued, and he gets reset. A little bit Spanish. Spanito, all right. And Woody and Buzz are friends again, and relationship is restored. Likewise, through the Lord Jesus, our relationship with God is restored. As he swapped places with us on the cross to rescue us from our sins so that we can be forgiven. Once his enemies, now his forever friends through faith in him. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. And because Jesus is alive, we know that the rescue worked. He paid the price for our sins completely, so there was no reason for him to stay dead anymore. So we can go to bed. If we are trusting him, we can go to bed each night knowing that Jesus loves us so much, that he died for us, (laughs) and that we are safe and at peace with God forever. We don't need to fear judgment when the risen Jesus returns one day and we stand before him because we are safe and at peace with God, qualified for heaven through Christ, through the risen Christ. Doesn't that give you deep peace within? It gives me huge peace. 
But he also gives us peace for the future, including death and beyond. Jesus is alive. He has beaten death. So in him, we have the guarantee of life after death in heaven. As he promised when he raised Lazarus, said, everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And so we can live confident that our eternal future is secure. We don't have to fear death because we will be raised from the dead like he was. And not only that, but Jesus promises us the world that we all long for. You think about our world at the moment. It's in such a mess, isn't it? It's so broken. It's so broken. Now, I've got, I brought in a, a Lego model. Actually, let me move over here. I brought in a Lego model uh, that my daughter made in the car to show you. And it's, it's got broke. Oh, it's, it's got broken. So I'm just going to put this, I'm just going to put this down. It's, uh, oh, hang on, I put it around the wrong, have I put it around the wrong way? I put it around the wrong way. There we go. This is Spider-Man's house. There we go. Right, so it's just, it's a bit busted up at the moment, so I'm just going to see if I can fix it. Okay, uh, so there we go. There we go. Look at that. So it was broken. Now it's fixed. Quite good, isn't it? I'd like to say I did it, but I didn't. So there you go. Broken and now fixed. Now one day Jesus is going to come back and he is going to fix this broken world. He's going to fix this broken world, bring a perfect new world with no more death or crying or pain. He'll fix our broken bodies. We'll get real resurrection bodies like his that never sin or get old or break down or get hurt. No more plasters, no more Calpol, <laughs> no more hospital appointments. What a joy that will be. You'll be able to play football like Harry Kane. Well, at least that's what I'm hoping anyway. But we will live forever. We will live forever in Jesus' resurrected new creation with no sin and no sickness with our Lord. What a joy. What a joy that will be. How can we be sure? Because Jesus is alive. Broken on the cross, now fixed. He can fix us. He can fix this broken world. He will return to do so. His resurrection gives us peace and hope for the future. And Jesus gives us peace today too. When we turn from sin and trust him, he looks after us every day because Jesus is alive. He's with us when we're afraid of the dark. He's with us in the worry of exams and the worries of life, with money troubles and relationship troubles. He's with us to help us in our battles with sin and when we are poorly. You know, many are battling anxiety at the moment. Sadly, mental health issues among teenagers evidently have grown rapidly since 2010. One renowned US psychologist puts it down to the use of smartphones and social media. And I saw this week, it's interesting, Florida has passed a law banning children under 14 from using social media. And there are calls to do that here too. Sadly, young people are struggling, but it's not just them, is it? Many of us are carrying the weight of some sadness or pain or worry. What a comfort to know that the risen Jesus who sympathizes with our struggles is looking after us. That we can say his promises out loud, knowing that he is alive to keep them. That we can pray, Lord, please help me strengthen me, uphold me, and he is alive to hear us and to bring us through the suffering. Do you feel weighed down at the moment? Jesus is alive. He is seated in victory on the heavenly throne, 
ready to show you mercy, ready to give you strength, ready to give you a peace that transcends all understanding. Bring your sorrows, your worries, your sin to him. Pray for rescue. So peace with God, peace for the future, peace today. Everyone needs that. Everyone needs that. So Jesus sent his disciples out. Verse 21, in the power of the Spirit. And it's why he sends us out too. With that same power, his Spirit in our hearts. And we go confident that Jesus has risen, that he is alive. And we go to continue his gospel ministry. To reach out to the lost. To our family, our friends, our work colleagues, whoever it might be. Here. And abroad, we go to point people to the risen Saviour who brings forgiveness and who brings peace, who brings eternal life and hope. It is the best news. It is the best news. And so we go, not in our own strength, but we go in the power of the Spirit. May not always get our words right. They may be a jumble but we can all say something through the power of the Spirit to point people to the risen Saviour who brings forgiveness and peace. I wonder if you know that peace. If you wouldn't yet call yourself a Christian, come to Christ. Investigate the claims and the peace and the joy he brings. So this Easter Sunday, we celebrate the proof that Jesus is alive. This is true. This is fact. And we celebrate the peace the risen Jesus gives us. How wonderful. How wonderful to know that Jesus is alive. Let me pray. Living Lord Jesus, we praise you that you are alive We thank you for the proof that you, our glorious, mighty Saviour, that you live. And we thank you that because you have risen, we can be at peace with you. That we don't have to fear death or judgment. That we know a new world is coming. And we know that you are caring for us and looking after us each and every day. We praise you, Lord, for the peace that we can have because you are alive and risen from the dead. In Jesus' name.